Hi, and welcome to another tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. In this tutorial, I'm going to follow up on the last time calculation tutorial, and I've had a few questions about how you go about calculating time when it goes across midnight. So if we take an example like Jim here, where he starts at 9.30 a.m. and finishes at 5.30 p.m., he's worked eight hours but that's okay, it's easy to do because it's in the same day, but what if it crosses midnight? So as an example, what I'm going to do is change Jim's time, so we get him working from evening to early morning. So click in cell B6 there, and I'm simply going to type in there 10 space P for 10 p.m. Just right arrow key across to C6, and here I'm going to type in there 5 space A for 5 a.m. And if we look at the formula that already exists, obviously it's calculated by uh, subtracting the start time from the finish time, which would normally be a small number from a large number, but because we've got the time going across midnight, we're actually subtracting a large number from a small number to give us a negative. And as you can see, that causes Excel problems. So we need to correct the formula, and to do that it's really quite simple. So if we make sure we're in cell D6, which is our result cell, I click in the formula bar. And all I'm going to do here at the end of that existing formula, at the end of B6, is type plus, type an open bracket, open parentheses, click on the end time. And then this time I'm going to type the less than symbol. And then click on the start time and then close the bracket. So there's the new formula. Now the, the less than and greater than symbols are on the, the comma and the full stop keys. Uh, you'll find this basically to the right of the letter M on your keyboard, in case you wondered. Now what's going to happen here is when it does that comparison, it's going to find that our end time, 5 a.m., is actually smaller than our start time. So basically what happens when we, t when we evaluate this formula here, C6 uh, less than B6, is it's like a, a mini if statement, if you like. And so it's comparing the two values. And if the result is true, if C6 is less than B6, it's going to put the number 1 between our brackets. So we're effectively going to do C6 minus B6 plus 1. And that will convert the negative value to a positive value and will give us a correct result. If, however, it's a normal time calculation where we're deducting a small number from a large number, then it will evaluate the result as zero. In other words, C6 is not less than B6, and the original calculation plus zero equals the original calculation. So there's no modification. Hopefully that makes sense. Now then, if I just click on my little tick there to accept that result, you'll see that it puts seven hours in, which is correct, and it calculates the pay correctly as well. And then I can copy that formula by clicking the bottom right of the cell there and dragging back up. So all these cells now have the modified formula, but as you can see, only one of them requires the adjustment, i.e. the uh, logical test to put the number one in to uh, modify the negative result to a positive result. The other two come out as positive results anyway, so there's no modification made on those. One final thing you might want to consider is if you're calculating time across several days, now it wouldn't necessarily apply with an employee working that many hours, hopefully, but if you had a project that was starting on a particular day at a certain time and ending several days later, it might be useful to be able to calculate the duration of that project. And so let's just say we have an example here where we're doing stock check. And so I'll just type in stock check here, just tab across. Uh, let's modify column A so it fits that title. And let's say we have a start date of the 1st of May at 9 a.m. Now I can enter the date and time simultaneously in the cell by typing 1 forward slash 5 space 9 space A. Okay, and then tab across. Now don't worry about the hash marks, that just indicates that the result is too big for the cell. So I'm going to again just increase the size of that column. And you can see it's got 1st of May 2011, 0900 hours. Okay, so that's our start finish. And this time I'm going to adjust that cell 
or the column width in advance and let's say it finishes on the 4th of May so I type in 4 forward slash 5 space and let's say we end at 5.30 p.m. for sake of argument so I'm going to type in 5 colon 30 space p which is our Excel code for 5.30 p.m. just tab across and now I can do a very simple calculation again here I'm just going to because it's combining the date and time I don't need to do the logical test modifier it's not applicable here so I simply need to do equals click on the finish date stroke time minus again and click on the beginning date time and again we can just click on the tick there to accept that don't worry about the hash marks just means the results too big for the cell and if I extend that you will see we get 03019008030 which looks nonsensical but don't forget this is just because it's the way the cells formatted it's adopted the formatting from the previous column so I'm going to modify that by going to the format menu choose cells uh, we have our custom option there and you'll see what I've got at the moment it says uh, day month year etc which is obviously what I don't want so I'm going to scroll down and there's no example there really that's suitable so I'm going to create my own here I'm going to delete everything out of there and what I'd like to have happen is the number of days first so I type DD space then the number of hours so HH and then type a colon and type MM for minutes okay you can already see the result in the sample there I'm going to click OK and I can actually reduce that column width now back again and it says 03 for days 08 for hours and 30 for minutes okay now if you don't want that to be your end display you could actually um, have it displayed in different ways now what I'm going to do here is just insert a couple of columns by simply selecting these ENFs I'm going to right click and insert and this is only going to apply to this bottom example here but for the sake of argument I'll tell you what I'll actually put the column headings down here let's say we put days here and hours here so all I want to do here is in the is these two cells just have the identical calculation that's in this cell so as I move it across I don't want it to change so I'm going to modify this formula so it's an absolute reference so just highlight those uh, cell references press F4 okay so that's that done and I can then drag across that formula so now we have the identical result in these two cells and then all we need to do is just modify those with the format options so if I go to the first one which is days and modify that to just simply DD okay so it says 03 and then the hours I can go again format cells and this time modify that by simply deleting the days part and click OK so now and just to tidy that up I can actually select those and just center them as well so you can see here I've got a days column and an hours column which is a really basically it's extracting the same information as this one but displaying it in two columns as opposed to one you can do that any way you like really you can have it combined or separated out it doesn't matter bear in mind if you're doing some kind of calculation however and if I just um, I'm going to duplicate our rate and pay cells here by just selecting and dragging down okay just expand that column so you'll see there if I have eight pounds per hour paid to let's say our contractor for three days and eight and a half hours work he will get 644 pounds so that's a couple of ways that you can calculate or extend your time calculations first of all to cross midnight uh, if it's less than a 24 hour period simply by modifying the original formula to add this logical test at the end and then add the result of that and if you're doing it over several days you can combine the date and time in a single cell and then display the result of that as a combined display as here or you can simply separate that out and have days and hours displayed in separate columns okay now if you want to have the combination result uh, for calculations but just have your days and hours displayed you can actually hide the uh, combination result here and as you know there's one way of doing that which is right click on the column and simply choose hide and so all the users see is this bit 
Okay, well, that's uh, a few extra bits and pieces for you to work on there for your uh, time calculations. Hope that was useful, made sense. Thanks for watching again, and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.